Okay, now in this particular video, once again, welcome to the CFD blog. In this particular video, we are going to trash this topic, screw jack. Now this particular machine is, I think for me, is the most difficult machine for students to understand. Screw jack. So we are going to take my time and explain everything on this. First of all, a screw jack is a popular device you use to lift load, bigger load like motor car, as you can see, this is a diagram. Now I want you to understand the concept of a screw jack. The problem is that most of you always cram formulas. Remember, the standard formula, no matter what the machine is, for a velocity ratio, is distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. Now the distance moved by the effort, this is the effort where you are applying your effort. So, the distance moved by effort, as you are rotating, this is a rotational motion. So, as you are rotating, it's, you are making a circle. So, from here, if you rotate, you find that the distance you are moving, you are making a circle. And round, the distance round a circle is circumference of a circle. And what is the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. You don't need to cram that. As you are rotating, for you to rotate and come back, you have made a complete circle. So that distance you cover is the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r. Now some textbook we say that here is a. It doesn't matter. The textbook you are reading, a is equal to the radius of the circle. That is the length of the tummy bar. So the reason why I'm writing r is sometimes they might not give you length of tummy bar. They might call it the radius of the circle made by handle. In that case, you use R. So either you are using 2 by A, A is still the radius of the circle or the length of the tummy bar, they all mean the same thing. It doesn't matter. Now divided by distance moved by the load. The, the, the load, this is the load. If you bring out a screw jack, it's already compressed. For you to lift a load, as you are rotating, applying an effort here, this load is going to go keep on going up. As this thing is going up, it is expanding the pitch of the spring of the screw jack. So this is the number of pitches that increase. As the pitch is increasing, the load is going up, 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 and up. So the distance covered by the load or moved by this load is the length of the pitch. So the screw pitch, as it is straightened, that is the way the um, load is being covered. So this is nothing, there's nothing to cram there. 2 pi r divided by the pitch length or the screw pitch. So r stands for the length of the tummy bar or handle, p is the screw pitch or distance of the pitch, as you can see from the diagram. That's the velocity ratio of a screw jack. Now we are going to use a question to explain better. Okay. Now this is a question on screw jack. Let's use it and explain the formula on how to apply the formula on screw jack in case of exam sake. Now what we have here says a screw jack with pitch 0 0.5 cm. So let's just be quick. Solution. The pitch is 0 0.5 cm. And the, the handle of the screw jack, the handle is 2 cm, so the length of the screw which is A, is 2 cm. Determine the radius, sorry, determine the force that must be applied, the force that must be applied. Any force you are applying is called the effort, so that is what we are looking for. Determine the force that must be applied at the end when lifting a load. We know the load, L, to be 2000 Newton when lifting a load of 2,000 Newton, considering the efficiency of the screw jack. So we, are look, we are have our efficiency to be 35%. 35%. So we are looking for E. How do we get that? From the formula of efficiency, efficiency is mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100%. So we need to get a mechanical advantage or of, and our velocity ratio. So can we get a velocity ratio? Velocity ratio for screw jack is 2 pi r over the pitch length. So what we have is 2 
times pi will always be given to you in brackets. We can use pi to be 3.14 in this case. But it depends on what they give you. So let's assume that pi is 3.14 times r is 2. If the units are not the same, you need to convert to the same unit. But since the units are the same, we are not converting. Divided by p, which is 0 0.5. You have 25.12. So the velocity ratio of this particular machine is 25.12. Now, we have gotten the velocity ratio. Let's see if we can get a mechanical advantage using the formula for efficiency. So we know that efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage divided by the velocity ratio times 100% over 1. The efficiency is 35, which if we divide by 100, we have 0 0.35 is equal to, we are looking for the mechanical advantage. We now have our velocity ratio, which is 25.12. Can we cross multiply? Now if we cross multiply, I'm going to clean this. So if you cross multiply, our mechanical advantage becomes 0 0.35 times 25.12. Two. So this will give us 8.792. 0 0.35 times 25.12. This will give us 8.792. But remember, what we are looking for is the effort. And we can find effort in mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is equal to load over the effort. Therefore, make effort the subject of the formula. The effort will give us load divided by mechanical advantage. Load divided by mechanical advantage. Now, what is the load in the question? We are giving the load to be 2000. So we have 2000 divided by mechanical advantage. Now we have gotten as 8.792. Now, if you divide 2000 divided by 8.792, what you are going to get is, if you punch your calculator very well, is this, 227.5 Newton. So this is how to apply one of the questions and I will explain this. For more exercises on Screwjack, please go to your exercise section and the past question section. You are going to see so many questions concerning this.